Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum. We have 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 5 times 7 plus 1 over 9 times 11, so on and so forth, where we have the reciprocals of the products of consecutive odd numbers, like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, so on and so forth. This is definitely very different from 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 7, where the numbers are repeated in each product. And you're going to see, you're going to realize why it's different. The second one is actually fairly easy to do. Maybe in another video, we can talk about that. But let's go ahead and focus on this right now. So to be able to find an infinite sum like this, first of all, one of the questions we need to talk about is, does this series converge? In other words, is there a finite sum for something like this? Because if you think about it, not all series converge, right? For example, the reciprocals, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth, this does not converge, right? It's divergent. But if you have the squares, then it's a different story. If you have 1 over 1, 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus, plus 1 over 4 squared, so on and so forth. Does that have a definite sum? Something to think about. But yes, the second one converges. And there's something called a P-series where you have a sum like 1 over n to the power P, where n is an integer and P, if P is greater than 1, then this series converges. All right? But anyways, that's a different story, and ours is very different from that, where there is no overlap. Okay? So how do we solve something like this? We're going to use the power of partial fractions. But I'm going to show you a really, really cool way to break it down. Hopefully you'll remember that and you can apply it to so many different scenarios. Okay, so here's how it goes. We start with the first term and if we can get a pattern and we can just apply it to pretty much any other terms. We're also going to be looking at the results from Wolfram Alpha in two different cases. I'll show you and what do you think? Do you think Wolfram Alpha can handle something like this? Okay, we'll find out. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the first term, 1 over 1 times 3. First of all, I noticed that the difference between the factors in the denominator, 1 and 3, is 2. If it was 1, then we would be in better shape. But that's okay, we can handle it. So we do need a 2 in the numerator. In other words, I'd like to get 2 over 1 times 3. It's better than 1 over 1 times 3. And I'll show you why in a little bit that's the case, but I can't just place a 2 there automatically, I kind of have to make up for it. So let's go ahead and multiply this by 1 half. 2's will cancel out and everybody's going to be happy, right? Now take a look. I'm going to leave the 1 half on the outside and write the 2 as 3 minus 1. That was the whole purpose of getting a difference of 2 in the numerator. Now, we can go ahead and split it up. Think about it. This fraction can be unsubtracted, like two fractions, but it's just one fraction, so we can kind of unsubtract. In other words, split it up into 3 over 1 times 3 minus 1 over 1 times 3. And obviously, that's the same thing as 1 over 1 minus 1 over 3, right? In other words, we can write this as 1 minus 1 third with a 1 half on the outside. Okay, cool. That's the first term. But notice, I split it up and made two terms. Take a look at the second one, 1 over 5 times 7. Again, I can do the same trick, 1 half and 2. This is 5 times 7. And then I want to write the 2 as 7 times 5 this time because I have 5 and 7 in the denominator. And then split it up into 7 over 5 times 7, which is 1 over 5. You get the idea. This is going to be 1 over 5 minus 1 over 7. And if you check, it'll check. Make sense? Okay. Hopefully it does. Now we're going to do the same thing one more time to get the pattern real, really good. 1 half times 2 over 9 times 11. And then 1 half, repetition is key here, 11 minus 9. So you really solidify the concept. I know some people are going to be like, ah, oh, this is too easy. Why are you spending too much time on it? Well, not everybody as genius as you are, okay? So calm down. So now we can write this as 1 over 9 minus 1 over 11. And now we have three terms. We can go ahead and put it all together and see what happens with these. And of course, there's more terms, but once we get the pattern, we don't really need everything. So we're going to have 1 half times 1 minus 1 third plus 1 half times 
1 over 5 minus 1 over 7. Notice that there was no overlap. So the denominators are all different. Notice that uh, there's no intersection. So we're going to get something like this. The one thing that's good about it is that we have one half on the outside, which means it is a common factor, which means we can factor one half out. Awesome. What do we get inside? We get one minus one third plus one fifth minus one seventh plus one ninth minus one eleventh. I wanted to show you at least three terms. So we got six terms and to get a really good idea about the pattern. So notice that the expression inside the parentheses, they're all reciprocals of odd numbers and they are alternating, right? So it's plus minus plus minus. That, that, that's what alternating means. An alternating series can converge, but when the plus version converges, then it's absolutely convergent. So that's a different story. A series may converge, but may not absolutely converge. That's uh, definitely a different story. And obviously, you probably would agree that the terms of this series, the sum, is going to be less than if everything was positive. And guess what? This series does not converge. Does it? No. It's just actually a subseries. Well, is that a term? <laughs> well, there's a subsequence, but I don't know if there's a subseries, but you get the idea. It's like the reciprocals, but only odd numbers. So, great, but not so great. What's inside the parentheses? How can I find that sum? Good question. So, that sum actually can be found by pi over 4, and you might be questioning, like, where does that come from? If you really want to know where that sum comes from, because I talked about it in another video, if I can find the link, and if I don't forget, I'll share the link with you. But let me tell you, just real quick, uh, for the time being, you can go ahead and check uh, the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx from 0 to 1, a definite integral, and uh, in which you treat this as uh, the sum of a geometric series. So if you go ahead and use the formula for the sum of a geometric series, and notice that x would be between 0 and 1, so that should converge in the infinite case. And if you take a look at that, you're going to realize that the terms will alternate, and if you integrate term by term, or just integrate directly, you hopefully know how to integrate this, and then you'll get what I'm talking about. So I'm going to leave it at that, and now is the time to look at what Wolfram Alpha says. Are you ready to see? Ta da da da, large language model, or just a language model, whatever. Wolfram Alpha cannot handle this sum if you give it to it like 1 over 3, 1 over 35. Notice we had 5 times 7 and 9 times 11, right? Unable to determine. Too bad, Wolfram Alpha, you should do better next time. What about if we become, uh, make it a little bit more explicit without using the summation notation? Too bad. Still cannot determine. So we're, we humans are still smarter than language models and pretty much all AI, right? Unless otherwise stated. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. By the way, tomorrow, I'll see you at A plus B I. If you didn't know, that's my channel where I focus on complex numbers anyways. Let's not keep it too long. Bye-bye.